Let us come into the house of the Lord with thanksgiving and praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Father God, that you have allowed us to wake up and come into the house this morning, Heavenly Father, to hear your word, Heavenly Father. I decrease, Heavenly Father, that you may increase inside of me and speak your word of oracles and understanding through my mouth, Heavenly Father, to encourage, uplift the body of Christ, Lord Jesus. I pray for the presence of the living God to be in this room, to move in this room, and to have his way in and through this room, Heavenly Father. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive what thus says the Lord, Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I know it's a real, real bad rainy day out there, so I thank those of you that are here. Um, and I don't know, so for those of you that are doing Zoom, uh, it's probably not going to work. Uh, they were having difficulties, and it's been a hard time for me to get all this stuff lined up again. So um, there's nothing I could do about that. Uh, so you may have to just watch it on YouTube later on. Um, but uh, for those of you that are on Facebook, good morning to you. And those of you that are on YouTube, good morning. And good morning to the body of Christ that is in the church. Um, praise God. Praise the Lord. We are alive today. Today is another day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. God has given us the abundance of having... We are, we are such a spoiled nation. When we look at what's going on around the world... And you look at your own friends and family members, that even strangers who are just not understanding that God's hand is on this nation, as messed up and demonic as it is. But we know that we are to uh, be the light in this dark place. We are to be <laughs> that light no matter what the cost. A lot of people don't get it that there's a cost being a Christian. We like, oh no, hallelujah, let's go to church and we got our little flags and little crosses and all that. But then when the persecution comes, why me, God? Well, Jesus got persecuted. Jesus died and told us, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And so we have to overcome the world, but we still have to be the light. We have to be the light. It's important in this time that we be the light. And being the light is going to cost. And the, the cost is, it, it's going to cost your family, your friends, your job, your relationships, because you're a Christian. And your light is supposed to be so bright that people that are in the darkness want to turn from it. But when you find another light and you two join together, that light becomes brighter. And that's what I try to make sure we establish in the church that we are a part of is that our light will so shine. We are the salt of the world. We are a light on a hill, but sometimes we got to come off that hill into the valley where the darkness is and let our light shine. So I don't know where that all came from, but praise the Lord. It sure felt good to say. All right. So um, there is a couple of, you know, I was really not, I almost called uh, Pastor Dino last night and said, brother, I think you can go on and run your race with what you've been preaching on. And so I was sitting there because there's so much going on in my head and in my spiritual walk that I, I was just, there's, you know, it's hard to, when God starts downloading so much stuff into you for you to see, you have to know what to preach on. You have to really be there because some stuff God gives to us it's for us to kind of take on our own and walk and see because he might be dealing with us personally. And then there's things that God allows us to say, now go with this. So last night I was watching, I, I, I had certain episodes of things I watched and last night I was watching this show and all out the blue, God, only God knows why my spirit shifted and the movie paused and the next thing I know, all this stuff just got me just... I said, oh, I guess I am preaching tomorrow. And so I think where I want to go is really because right now, like I'm going to do my stage uh, practice after this. 
and and and, and at the end of my my gig, I always try to present Jesus. And so today, when I was chilling, he was like, "I'm actually doing a part, and I'm sharing this because a lot of us are here." And I got yesterday. I was talking to someone that was really broken. You know when you talk to someone that's really broken and you start to feel that, you know what, they're not the only ones? And I think we, we feel, and, and Brother Jesus has sent out a, a Deacon Jesus has sent out a, a, a Facebook thing about going back to what we, was, what we was broken from. And it took me back to the Apostle Paul. Because sometimes we go back, like he did, to Damascus where he met Jesus. And he got refilled. And a lot of times when we go back to where we met Jesus, it reminds us, I don't want to go there anymore. This is where I need to go. And sometimes we need that reminder because sometimes we can start drifting. And so this brother that was talking to me, I was like, wow. I go, maybe I should talk about brokenness, right? And so there's just so much, right? So anyway, in this part of, the, of my act, I'm chained up. And the Lord, I, I felt in my spirit, he goes, at the end of your your skit, I want you to break the chains because I broke them off of you and you got set free. Because I always make sure I bring Jesus into what I'm doing. So, in a sense, we're going to understand right now, and I want all of you to really get this. You have to understand what's going on right now. And a lot of people don't know, and last two Wednesday... We kind of touched on a little bit of it. It's a, I left it up here on the board because I, I just have a feeling we're going to be here for a minute. I don't want to, you know, you could look at it, but what's happening on the second part of this is that I want the world to understand what is going on, but what's prophetically taking place. And a lot of people don't understand that Gaza is in the Bible. And Gaza is in the Bible. What's going to happen to Gaza is actually happening. But the world doesn't understand that prophetically that was supposed to happen. So I bought this Bible about, man, I, I, years ago. And in it, I was stuck because I'm an Old Testament person. I don't, just always have been. I look at God as my father. Like, I've never had a father, so I look at God as my father. So when I look at God as my father, I look at him as a father figure. What, what does my father expect of me? When, does my, when my father gets mad at me, how's he going to deal with me? Fathers deal with us a lot different than anybody else because it's an authority and we should have some type of reverence to where our daughter just loves God and you know loves their father and there's a different kind of relationship but there's still a chastisement that comes from the father to the daughter but it's in a different kind of way than a father to a son and I'm pretty sure brother Jesus knows this because he has both as I have both and so I just want to read something about uh, what's what's taking place and what's going on in our world so people could stop and say, you know what, I didn't know that. And so last week we talked about um, the book of Isaiah, we talked about Damascus, we talked about the book of Zechariah, we talked about this being the preparation of the Antichrist coming. So one of the things is I came here the other day and I cleaned up and did some stuff and was doing all this and I said to myself, let's not forget what this is all about. And I was in the jail preaching, and the guys didn't realize this. And I think a lot of people don't realize this. And again, there's only a handful of pastors that are really preaching about this as far as on social media. Is that this whole thing is about the return of Israel back to Jesus, back to God. And I think the world doesn't understand that. Like, this is a drawing when God comes back. God, You know, everybody looks at Jesus and they're like, oh, Jesus, the, the, you know, he came, he saved us, he died and all that. But who did he die for was the bigger picture. What books in the Bible were talking about Jesus coming back? So I wanted to kind of walk through some stuff today. And, and this is more of a... a, a, a 
a teaching to help people kind of start watching the news correctly. That's what I want. I want you to watch the news and say, hmm, okay, this is happening. This is happening in the Bible. This is happening. Whoa, that already happened in the Bible. This is happening because we need to understand. So we started last week with, with uh, oh, Jesus was here. Does anybody, I don't know if anybody saw the video, but Jesus was here. Uh, maybe he might remember. What was the very first thing we talked about that has already happened? The drying up of Euphrates River. And everybody saw that and auto automatically everybody's spiritual mindsets went wacko. Not realizing, hold on, there, there's, there's things being lined up. So when the, when the Euphrates River is dried up, we know that biblically there's something that's supposed to happen with that river drying up. And, I mean, these guys in jail was, when we was done, they was like, wow, I never knew any of this stuff that you're saying, and that bothered me. Because I'm thinking all these people that go into these jails, what are they teaching them? So... Let's just take a journey really quick. So Euphrates River has already dried up. There's no water there. So it's still that way. Now, we're not going to go into a deep thing because I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but there's a lot to read. And so um, I actually posted a lot of this on, on, on Facebook to have them be able to follow us. So that, can we just, for, for the, for now, can we go to uh, Zephaniah? Now, I'll give you time to get there because I know you probably never heard of that book. Some of you are probably saying, what the heck? That's in the Bible? Yes, it is. And we're going to read stuff from there. And even I have to go to the table of context for that one. All right. And what I want us to see here is to kind of understand some things that are taking place and why they are taking place so we can have a better understanding. So Zephaniah chapter 2 and we're going to read verses 4 to 5. When you're there, let me know because I am not in a rush. Mm. Alright. Everybody there? Yeah. Alright. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast. The nation of the Cher Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitants. Um, I'm sorry, I missed, I read verse 5. My back, so I was like, wait a minute, I know, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry. Bear with me. I got a lot in my head. Gaza. Verse 4. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ascalon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Now, this a lot of people don't, they're like, why? What's going on in Gaza? Well, read your book. God didn't leave us blinded. He left us with a book that tells everything. We just don't take the time out to sit. And last night, I mean, I was, because I've read this before. We've talked about this in here before. But it was like, no, they need to really see because everybody's looking at why is Israel doing genocide to Gaza, let, let me explain something to you because there's a lot of Christians that don't get this. God is bound by his word, which means he has to do it because if he doesn't do it, then he's a liar. And if he lies, then this is all a lie. We're all messed up. And they talk about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when Paul says, she's we are most pitiful because if this isn't real, we're, we're messed up. We're getting beaten, killed, tortured. We believe. So if this is in the book and we actually teach it correctly and give somebody something to go back and read for themselves, I don't care what 
whatever translation, who, who got a different translation than me? What, what do you got? I have NLT. What does yours say? Uh, verse 4 and 5. Yes, just read verse 4. Okay. Uh, Gaza and Eshkelon will be abandoned, Ashdod and Ekron torn down. Okay, so we have, we have an understanding here. There's something bad is coming and it's going to be wiped out. Some Bibles say desolation. We have to understand that this is actually happening now. And because it's happening now, this is a prophetic word because this is Old Testament that we're reading. So this is a prophetic word actually happening right now. But nobody, nobody's talking about it. And so all these people online and around the world that are coming against Israel, it blows my mind that people like me and Dino don't know this. That man got at least 20 years, probably more in ministry than myself. You know this, right? But a lot of people aren't talking about it. So everybody's against it. And they're saying, oh my God, God is actually come. He's, he, it's, he's on his way. This stuff is taking place now. This is prophetic words happening, taking place now. Don't be afraid. But look up for your redemption draws nigh. And that's what people, people are afraid. People don't get it. People don't want to leave. Why? Because maybe their life is getting better right now and they think it can't get no better. Well, if, if heaven is a gazillion times better than this, I'm dying to see what's up there than what's down here. Because you could have the best relationship, the best job, the biggest house, the most structured kids, and heaven is still a million times better than that. So I just wanted us to see this, right? Now, that's Gaza. Now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 17. And I pray that those of you that are on the internet watching this from YouTube or from, from Facebook, that you're actually looking at all this and thinking about it because the thing is that you can now understand what the news is saying, what people are chanting and the incorrectness of the chanting. And when I started out, I started out by saying, this is not about us, this is about Israel. And when we are done today, the documents that I emailed to you guys are going to explain Jesus and the whole purpose of what's going on. And what I'm doing, whether you understand it or not, I'm doing my best to stay in sync with him and what he's teaching, Pastor Dino. I'm, that's my, because he's teaching on the gifts. Our gifts prove that Christ is real. Our gifts prove we are, the Bible says the uh, signs and wonders will follow them. Our, we are, as, I don't know about you, but I'm a wonder because I was messed up. You, to, man, I still can't get over God using me. I mean, man, I, trust me, every time I think, like, how are you doing this? How is it that you, I, it's, it blows my mind. So I'm a wonder. <laughs> you may not, you, you are too. You may not think so, but let's take a trip down your, like he said, I don't want to go where it broke me. Nope, I'm going to go there Quite often to remember, yeah, I don't want to be there again. I'm good. I have been restored. I've been rebuilt. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am a wonder because I know I should be dead. I should be in prison for the rest of my life. There, man, I should, man, as whorish as I was, I should have AIDS, syphilis, gunner. I should have, but I should be like messed up in some hospital bed dying right now. But his grace, <clears throat> his grace. Isaiah 17, verse 1. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and is, it shall be a ruinous heap. Now, we talked about this the other day. So, my purpose for reading that scripture again, 
is I want you to see that here we have Gaza, and Isaiah we have Damascus. Damascus is where Syria and Lebanon and all this stuff is taking place right now. So we have to understand, God, I pray, Lord, that you really give them the understanding of all this. If Gaza, have you seen Gaza lately? It's a ruinous heap. Damascus, half of Damascus is a ruinous heap from prior wars. But it says that both of these are going to be. Right now, we see that happening. And I think uh, the British and the United States just kind of went off on Syria and Lebanon. That's Damascus. So when people don't understand what's going on, they automatically go on their own understanding. I could have swore the Bible said, lean not to your own understanding. Amen. So I have to ask God, what is it that you're trying to tell the world and myself? I want to be prepared too. So I don't live my life like, oh, God is coming in 20 years. No, I'm living my life like God is coming in 20 months. Because when we look at one thing is that we are leading, how do I say, we are leading up to the Antichrist coming. We're on our way there. But there's still seven years after that. In seven years, we, we can go on that seven days, seven years, 77 weeks, or seven times seven weeks. Whatever you want to, we're on our way there. So we need to understand that part and be prepared for that part. Because that's when all you Christians in this room and watching everywhere, that's when your real test of faith is going to come. When you can't carry a Bible. When you can't talk about Jesus. When we become a communist nation. When all that happens and you are being per you think the Jewish people are going to be going through stuff. The entire Jewish community and Christian community is going to be going through that. Why? Because of Jesus. And what did Jesus say? They're going to hate you because they hated me first. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand these things. So I think that God is using my mouth to get this out there. But to also understand, you need what, what Dino talking about the Holy Spirit's gifts, you have to really understand the relationship you need with the Holy Spirit is very, very important. We always focus on Jesus. Now, let me tell you something. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. He's like, I'm done. I did my stuff. I gave you inside of us what was inside of him to do what we need to do, which is where Dino is teaching on. And it's very important because you are going to need to be used and to operate in those gifts so people can know, whoa, this stuff is real. This Jesus is real. And they need, people don't know, especially Christians, and this is how you can know if a Christian is a Christian, is that what I'm telling, what I'm sharing, biblically, they're going to be like, yep, I read that, yep, that makes sense, yep, the Spirit of God is revealing that to me, yep, that's on point. Somebody else will say, I, I don't get it, because you may not be saved, you may not have the Holy Spirit in you, because the Holy Spirit teaches us these things. So it's very important that Believers know this so we could share this at our jobs. I mean, these guys in jail were like, whoa, like I never seen it. And I haven't even showed this stuff to them yet. Usually they're ahead of you. This time they're behind you because I just got a lot of this last <clears throat> night. So again, we understand Gaza, Damascus, they are both going to be wiped out. So I want to read something to you about Zechariah. So, I just, this is in this Bible, you don't have it. It says, this chapter is a dynamic end time prophecy concerning the struggles of Jerusalem, the battle of Armageddon, and the mercy to be poured out when the Messiah returns. See? This is about the return of Jesus to the Holy Land to get them to look upon him and say, Jesus is real because all this time they don't believe. And so it is important for us to understand that. 
And so when last night I was sitting back <clears throat> and I want you to go, well, you don't have to, but I, I, I sent you this because I told you I wasn't going to waste no more ink. Isaiah chapter 7 talks about Emmanuel. Now, the, the, you guys have this because I sent it on the email last night. Mm -hmm. um, it says, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. During the Christmas season, this verse becomes a part of our common vocabulary. Most Christians, uh, pagan, uh, paganists, recite this, the verse, and pastors explain the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. What we have to understand is that when they, in the chapter 7 of Isaiah, when they were talking about Jesus coming, what he was trying to say was that this Messiah is going to be born. This Messiah is going to be born to restore Israel back to the Lord because Israel was God's chosen people. He was never, it, see, I think what happened with Christians, and a lot of Christians do this, they separate us from them, not understanding that they were supposed to be the one, they were chosen. Like, you ever been somewhere and someone actually chooses you? Like, you know when someone's throwing a party and they give you a RSV? I think it's RS, is that RSV? RSVP, right? You're like, oh, wow, I'm like literally invited. I'm like, wow, you know, I got this nice graving and everything. You're excited because you are, that was Israel. Israel was God's chosen. That, that's where that statement, the apple of our eye, when we always say, oh, you're the apple of God's eye. No, Israel was, but okay, you can be too. But it was Israel. They were the apple of God's eye. He loved them. Jerusalem was a gift to them, but Jerusalem belongs to God. That's why the new Jerusalem is going to come down. So when we have, when we understand more of what's going on, is this is setting up the stage for the Antichrist to show up, for Jesus to show up, Jesus to do his thing, everybody to see him, and then boom. So there's a lot of stuff that's, that's leading up to that. But we're walking around just like life is life. No, life is preparing us for what's to come. And so in this Isaiah chapter 7, they're talking about that. They're talking about this revelation of this Messiah being born for Israel. Now, you got to understand something. The interesting thing that I always trip on is that when the apostles were brought to Jesus, they was brought to start the church age. So the book of Acts starts the church age. But the church age is the Christianity. But it never left that Israel was still God. So think about this. Why is there such a big war happening in the Holy Land and nothing happening over here? If you hate America so bad, right? Why is nothing that happening here? Because biblically, God has to show this is how we know what's going on. Because biblically, God said this is going to happen here. When we talk about them surrounding them, all this stuff that we're going to talk about that we're showing is actually happening in the Holy Land for us to realize, oh my God, the Bible is real. And people think no man wrote the Bible. No man didn't wrote the Bible. Man is, is, it's like I'm the Holy Spirit. And I breathe on Deacon Jesus and I say, write this. And he starts to write it. He's not writing what he's thinking. He's writing what I'm telling him to write. Then I go over to hey, uh, Dino and I tell Dino, now I want you to write this book. And so Dino starts writing this book. It's like me standing up here a minute ago. I, can't, I don't know how I'm doing. I still, this amazes me. Sometimes I watch the videos after. And I'm like, oh my God, wow, God, like I'm just, found it because I can't remember saying what came out of my mouth and I know it's him. And so we have to understand the power of the Holy Spirit is a lot deeper and a lot of people know man wrote the Bible. No, no, no. Man was used but the Bible it's clear that it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So with that being said I want to jump into something. We got to go back to Zechariah and Zechariah chapter 9, verse 5 to 6. All right. Ask 
Kalan shall see it and fear. Gaza also shall see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation shall be ashamed. And the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Again, we see that Gaza has issues with God already. This has nothing to do with Israel and all. This is a spiritual thing. This isn't a physical, carnal, fleshly thing. This is spiritual. And this has been going on for years. Thousands of years. And so I want us to understand what's going on here because I keep, everybody keeps talking like Gaza, Gaza, Palestine, Palestine. You have to understand biblically what's taking place right now. And everybody wants to feel good message. I want to leave church super excited. Why not leave church more knowledgeable with awe? Thinking like, man, uh, this, these newscasters are actually just catching up with the Bible. And the Bible is actually telling what the news is just now getting. And maybe if I learned this, I could tell somebody about it because they don't know. That's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be doing this. Zechariah chapter 12 I want us to see something and I didn't mean for this to be a long drawn out message it was I'm giving I think teachings do not need to be drawn out because I don't want to lose the attention of the audience of what I'm trying to do <clears throat> so we understand and, and, and I want to just reiterate if that's the word is that right now for everybody to understand where we're at, what is Ronnie talking about? So we have Gaza, and then we have Damascus. Now we understand that both of these places, which we just read, are going to be gone. They're going to be dealt with, and they're being dealt with right now. And for people to understand, um, where we're at is that so Syria and Lebanon are part of this surrounding area. So a lot of the attacks that are happening are happening in this area. Gaza itself, when you when they talk about Gaza, you got you got the West Bank, you got Tel Aviv, you got uh, I forget they got there's a whole lot of cities and stuff around there, right? But this is basically what's going on. Now, we just read that what's going on there is actually biblical. It's not man. I, that's what I want everybody to understand. This book we're reading is not a man's book. It is a Bible that is telling us what is going on. This right here is spiritual. It's not physical. Even though it's happening in the physical, it's spiritual. Just like you. You realize you're not a physical person no more, but you are a spiritual being. And your body is trying to adapt to your spiritual awareness now. Your self-conscious mind cannot fathom what the Spirit of God is telling you. Your mind, your body is like, that's why they're at war. Because your body's like, no, no, no. And the Spirit's like, yep. And you're, so you're, there's this war taking place because you're, you're a new person. So your body has to adapt to the way you want it to go that lines up with God. And then the world in your old nature is like, nope, we need to go this. So there's this war. Man, I'm telling you, when you really understand the spiritual dynamic that we're in, it makes a lot more sense. A lot more sense. So we understand that. Now I want you to understand where we're, why a lot of this is happening. 
And we're going to get into that right here. So we're going to go to... See, it's easy when I'm at home because, like, I got this big table and a big bed, and I just spread everything out. Here, I got drop and stuff. All right. Zechariah chapter... Chapter 12. And we're going to read verse 10. <clears throat> And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so we know this is in the Holy Land, the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is bitter, that one, as one in bitterness for his firstborn. Now, I thought about that pierced, right? Because we know that Jesus was pierced, but do you know that it talks about that in the book of Isaiah, too? So if you go to, <coughs> excuse me, Isaiah chapter 53, we're going to see that in the Isaiah. And I want you to see, the reason I'm taking you to the Old Testament is I want you to see how pro prophecy is very important. I think it was Paul who said, I wish that, you know, people spoke in tongues, but I wish more that they prophesied. Because prophecy is very important. Prophecy is for the church. So when we understand that this stuff was prophesied already, in Isaiah 53, 53, verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. When he got pierced, do you realize something? When he got pierced, by a centurion soldier. It was very interesting. I need you to kind of visualize this. Here's this centurion soldier. He pierces Jesus, and water and blood comes out of him. This same centurion soldier is the one that said, for this truly was the Son of God. I always thought about that. must have been very powerful. I'm wondering if the blood of Jesus before Jesus took his last breath, was so powerful that when he did that, it got to him and revelation happened. Now, is that biblical? I'm just telling you what I, my thought process was on this. Because what made him think that, amongst other things, right? Because there's a lot of things that happened from that that we could take from it. But here we're talking about they're going to look upon him whom they pierced. Who pierced Jesus? Israel. They were the ones that said, crucify him, crucify him. They let, go, they let uh, Bar Barabbas go, mm -hmm. um, the murderer. And then Jesus said to them, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. They have no clue that I'm doing this for them. And we just got lucky to get in that in grafting, right? So I want us I want us to understand that because I also sent you guys this, the coming king. That's <clears throat> Luke tells us that after Jesus ascended to heaven, the disciples returned to Jerusalem, Luke 25, 52. They also went back to the scriptures, the Old Testament suddenly blossomed with good news. Everywhere they looked, they found evidence that pointed towards the, the specifics of Jesus' life and ministry. When they, want, when they wondered why they had missed the, the connection be, before, 
they must have also remembered Jesus' promise. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So what's happening here is we need to understand biblically that what is taking place in the Holy Land, all these things that are taking place, we can go into China and Ukraine and all that at a later date, all that's playing a part of this very big picture. But this right here is for us to understand that a lot of people that are going, that are saying from the river to the sea, and they're trying to say that uh, Israel is trying to genocide uh, the, the Gaza and the Palestine. There's a whole bigger picture to this. And what we have to understand is that if we don't know what's going on, the Bible says people perish for lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. So it's my job, Pastor Dino's job, your job to tell the truth, to expound on the truth so people can understand. You have kids, you have grandkids that are living devilish. I had to perhaps pray for my kids on the way here. I also got to pray for my grandkids because my kids are raising my grandkids. So when I get with my grandkids, you best believe I lay hands on them quickly. Praying, everything. Why? Because our kids don't know too. They think that this way of living is okay because the world is watered down the Bible. And no one's expounding on these things that you guys can now expound on. So all that's happening here when they, just think about it. So here they are. So I'm going to kind of come to an understanding here. So all this is happening over here when, when all those places surround Israel. I need another board. Oh, right, here we go. So over here on this wall, as you guys can see, is Israel and Jerusalem right here. And they're surrounded. So the Bible says that in, and I, I, I think it's at, uh, Ezekiel 38 that they're surrounded, right? God's going to come fight for them. They're not going to fight. The reason God's going to come fight for them is because they have to look upon him who, who they pierced. So when God comes and does all this, it's gonna, they're going to be like, oh, praise God, Yahweh did this, and Jesus is going to show up. And they're going to be like, oh, that's Yeshua. Oh, my God. Old Testament, quick, it's going to come to them. Why? Because that's where they're at. They, they know Old Testament. Old Testament is what happened. They're going to look upon him who may pierce, and they're going to be grieved. We read this in Ma Ma um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. It says, all nations will mourn when they see him. Why? Because that's Jesus. And everybody in the entire world is going to know, oh my God, all the people. that This is why it's important for you to stay biblically walking. It's important. I don't care what you think. Jesus did not come and die for you so you could say, I'm going to live halfway in the world and halfway out the world. He said, I want you to be fully in here. Now, there's a transformation that's always going to take. That's why he said, he who has begun a good work in you will continue it until that day. Because we're always going to be fighting our flesh. But this is what's happening. So right now, why? And, and, and again, the emphasis is going back to, uh, let's go to uh, Zephaniah. I mean, no, I just, Zechariah chapter 9. Verse 9 and 10. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the the fowl of an of an ass now you know you remember that right when he came when they was praying shouting out hosanna hosanna in the highest and jesus said go over there and tell him he's going to give it to you just tell him the king is waiting for the ass and he came riding on him and i will cut off the the chariot from ephraim and the horse and the horse from Jerusalem and the ba battle bow 
shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from the sea, even to the sea, and from the river, even to the end of the earth. Do you know, this is where they keep saying, they're trying to kill it from the river to the sea. And you have to understand, this is all Old Testament that's coming to pass today. We are, you know, I always trip when they say we're living in great times. We actually are. We might be the very generation that's going to see Jesus. That would be awesome. I mean, think about it. You just look up one day and there he is. That would be, that that alone. And if you, and the Bible says that people are still going to reject him. How do you do that? It says in Revelation, still after everything that's going on, people are still rejecting him. It's like, wow, you deserve to be in hell then. And when you read Isaiah 53, it goes so in depth about what Jesus is going to go through for Israel. So when you think about God saying, oh, Israel, okay, I'm going to just let all this stuff happen to you. But at the end, I'm coming back to get you. That's the beautiful thing. He's coming back to get them. So as we see these things happening, we understand that Israel, again, has to be surrounded. Now, before you say I'm uh, speaking stuff, I need you to understand something. They're surrounded now. I'm not saying that God is coming back right now because, first of all, God is still here and Damascus is still here. So you have to follow the pattern, right? So this stuff, but we're seeing stuff happening. So we know that we're on the way there. So now that we see them surrounded, uh, so this surroundings, there's still something that's got to take place. Second Thessalonians still has to take place. The man of perdition, the son of perdition still needs to show up. Why? Because there has to be peace that's brought there. So we have to start paying close attention to everything that's going on from this point on in. We have to be really mindful of what's going on. Now let me tell you something again, and I know you're probably wondering why I keep going back to this to this uh, preaching on with uh, Dino with the spirit is because we cannot stand this fight without the Holy Spirit at all. We have no strength. Jesus made it clear in the Bible, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was crying on the floor, Father, Father, if this cup could pass me, let it go. It says the Spirit came and dealt with him, and he found the strength to say, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. What do you think does that to us? When we want, when we're fighting against it ourselves, we, if we run to the Bible, if we run to prayer, if we do something that's spiritual, we whoo! It's like this thing, pop, our spirit just wakes up because the Holy Spirit is basically saying, draw, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. You notice he didn't say, I'm going to draw near to you for you to draw near to me. It's a personal, intimate thing. I'm going to draw near to you. What do you usually tell your kid when something went wrong? Oh, come here. And if your kid loves you and trusts you, they're coming. But the Bible says to a stranger, they won't come. It says, my sheep know my voice. And another's, they won't follow. That other is the world and us and the devil. So we have this battle going on deeply inside of us, but our strength comes from the Holy Spirit. Our, our awareness of spirit, that's why we say pray for di um, discernment. Be very discerning. And it's very sad because a lot of Christians aren't discerning. They're lost. So, I'm not, I haven't lost anybody. You good? All right. So we're going to come to the climax of this thing. <clears throat> and, and, and again, I do this every now and then because I believe that 
so many people, and, and I will send you guys this thing on Zachariah, or maybe I'll have enough time to finish reading it. But the thing we have to understand is that people need to understand why. Like, why is all this happening? And it's clear in the Bible. because So, all of you are prodigals. And God is waiting for you. I'm God. I know that bad, bad image of him, but I'm God. And you're the prodigals. I'm waiting to do... I'm, waiting for you. But sometimes I got to figure out, okay, I got to do something to get you to me. I got to do something. Each one of us had a spiritual encounter that brought us to God. Bad, good. Some people it's good. Some people, some people got to Jesus easy, but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy for them to stay there. Some of us have to go through hell to get to Jesus and went through hell with Jesus. Case of point, but we know that it was Jesus, Holy Spirit, that kept us. The Bible says, if God don't keep you, you can't be kept. So Israel is God's chosen. He still loves them. He still wants them back. And so he went through Jesus dying on the cross. That didn't work. But when they see him, see, a lot of people are visual. Imagine, a man. A, a man, you know, it, it amazes me what people say they're going to do when they see Jesus. First of all, you're probably going to be scared because you're going to wonder, dang, you might be in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing, at the wrong time, and boom, Jesus <laughs> shows up. But you're going to heaven, but you're going to feel like crap because of where you're at, right? You might have felt at that moment. Others are going to see him and be in amazement. But it's, you don't know yet. You know you don't know. That's why I tell people, stop saying you, you're willing to die for Jesus. That irks me. Because you're complaining about the stupid things you're going through now, but you're willing to die? Come on, honey. And you can't do both. Pray that you are willing and ready when the time comes. Because it may not be the way you think. But this is the climax Romans 11, verse 11 to 23. And again, I do this at least once a year since 2020 because it's important. Israel cut off for us to be engrafted in and they're re-engrafting. So the church age happened in the book of Acts. Jesus died. Apostle Paul Peter went out started churches with 12 disciples, then there was more disciples, then, you know, Apostle Paul comes on board, Apostle Paul goes to the Gentiles, to us, they go to the Jews, but they're still there, and they're, and they're still, who, who, if you look at the interesting thing about the Bible, who are the apostles, the 11 preaching to? The Jews. Some believe, and some didn't. Still happening today. Some believe, and some don't. And God's like, okay, you don't realize that my son died for you. The Jewish people don't believe because they thought, oh, the king, everything's going to be restored when Jesus came. And Jesus couldn't be the Messiah because he stayed the same. They didn't realize that they, their sins is what separated them from God. But it wasn't always their, their problem because you got to remember, sin started in the garden. And you do know that Jesus is in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. He said, he's going to bruise your head and you're going to bruise his heel. He, they're talking about Jesus. They talk about the sons of the devil and the sons of God. We, me, I'll say me because I'm like, offend somebody. I was a son of the devil. And everything I did was to glorify the devil. I remember, man, God, if I could. Sometimes I read my book. Like, going back, I'll be like, whoo, God, thank you, Jesus. Like, really, thank you. I should, man, see, I'm not, I'm not, I know I ain't worthy, so I don't need no one to tell me I ain't worthy. i tell you myself. But thank God for Jesus making me worthy. Romans 11, 11. <clears throat> I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, that's us, 
for to provoke them to jealousy. See, it, it, was, it, was, it was a plan to get the Jewish people to go back because they seen us coming. Verse 12, now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the dim, dimini, diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, us, how much more their fullness. Verse 13, for I speak to you Gentiles, us again, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Verse 14, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, which is the Jewish people, which is my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them, the Jewish people, be the reconciling of the world, us, what shall the receiving, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Verse 16. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, the Jews, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. You see that? We are partakers with them, not separate from them. Verse 18, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thereof. Bearest not the root, but the root there. Root thee. Verse 19, thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, listen, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. See, their unbelief in Jesus, their unbelief in following the Lord, their unbelief in serving other gods. You know, it's very interesting because Jesus makes it very clear. Unbelief is a really bad thing. That's a really bad thing. Verse 22. 21. Thank you. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, least he also spare not thee. But that says a lot right there. Verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but toward thee. Goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. See, we got to stay in this. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. See? That's why I don't get why Christians keep saying that they're there and we're here. No, we are together. That's why we should be interceding and praying for Israel. Because we got, without them being taken out, we was not being brought in. I think that a lot of people, when I, I remember when I was a real baby in the Lord. I used to always think when they said, he's taking the two to make them one. I always thought, oh, he's taking the old me and the new me to make one, right? No, he's taking the Jew and the Christian He's making one, one person, one nation under God. And we have to understand that we are part of them and we need to thank them. So we should be fighting. We should be praying for them. You know, I was watching, and we'll end on this. I was watching, um, I watched these folks that are in the IDF over in, um, in, in Gaza. And he said, and I really want to figure out how to do this for myself. I really, really want to do this. But he said that some pastors from, I guess, the States went to went to Gaza because they're trying to restore Gaza to send people back. Um, 
he said he couldn't believe how these Christians were so <clears throat> loving and kind and praying for them. And, and I'm thinking, like, I don't know where that man stood as far as being just a Jew or maybe a Jewish that believes in Christ. But I was like, wow, you know, they're, the two are recognizing each other. And, and if that's the whole picture is that that's what God wants. So when you pray for Israel, pray for their protection, but pray for their eyes to be open that they can know Jesus. Remember, Jesus made it clear. If you don't have him, where are you going? God loves Israel. We should love Israel. And we could see what's going on. But not just them, what about our families? Our families don't really know Jesus. They're not really living Christ-like. There's so much judgmentalness amongst the body of Christ. And there's so much division amongst the body of Christ. There's so, I mean, the body of Christ is messed up. Let us at least try our best to be a really good branch for Jesus that's bearing good fruit. That's what we should be doing. This teaching that he's doing, take heed to it. Don't just come here on Sunday and Wednesday and write stuff down and let it go. Go home and study. I should not be the only one in my book 24-7 trying to figure all this out. Not just for you. I have to know about it. I have to believe in it. I have to swallow it. I have to examine myself every day. You should too. What we're doing up here to teach you guys is for you to be able to get it and then regurgitate it back out to somebody else. To look at your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, your co-workers, your friends, and say, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what's going on? Hey, no, that's not right. You shouldn't be saying that. You know why? Let me show you. And that's what we're called to do. It ain't just a pastor's job or the minister's job to do that. It's your job and yours watching. So I pray that you got that. Um, and that it made a lot of sense because this is where we're at. And I really pray that when you sit back and you're getting ready in the morning, look at yourself in the mirror, but look at yourself in the mirror. Not just your outer appearance, but your heart, your mind, and your soul. Where are you? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, my Lord, I thank you, Father, for the wisdom that you have spoken through my mouth that lined up with your word, Father. I pray that everybody that heard this message, that will hear this message, Lord, on Zoom and everywhere, Father, I pray that they will get wisdom and that they will get understanding and that they'll have a little more clarity to what is actually taking place in our world and in, in our nations, Father God, and to understand more about what's going on in Israel more of what's going on in, in, in Ukraine, more of what's going on around the world with all these different wars. Let us not just focus on what everybody says about Matthew 24, Father, but to go deeper into the Old Testament to get the revelations of prophecies being fulfilled today. So, Father, I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. I want to honor you. I want to ask for traveling mercies for our brothers and sisters who are stuck in this rain on our ways to our next destinations for this day. And I give you praise, honor, and glory. And may I add, Father God, as always, for those who do not know you, Father, for those who have been tugged on their heart that they may not be in right standards with you, Father, let them take this moment right now to invite you into their hearts, into their lives, Father, May they open up their mouths according to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, and, and confess with their heart. But they got to believe in their heart, to confess with their mouth. If they have that tug in, Lord God, according to Scripture, if they believe in their heart and they confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, they shall be saved. For with the heart one believes, and with the mouth one confesses to salvation, Lord if someone has just said that prayer, Father, direct them to us or direct them to a church that's a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Holy Spirit-led church, Father, that they can be rejuvenated, that they can grow, that they can be mentored and discipled, Father. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. For those of you on YouTube amen. and Facebook, if you go into our YouTube page, 
and subscribe. You will get our messages that are done on Sundays and on Tuesdays because I'm getting a lot of people that are asking where are my messages at. If you do the subscription, it will go automatically to you. God bless you. God keep you. And have a happy Sunday.